We return to our top story on the East West Line train service disruption. It began yesterday morning when a faulty train was making its way back to Ulu Pandan Depot. Its axle box came off, causing a bogey or undercarriage to come off the rail, severely damaging track equipment. Now, checks by LTA and SMRT revealed three damaged point machines. These are devices that help trains switch onto different tracks smoothly. When out of service, they may cause trains to be rerouted or delayed. Now, several power cables and rail clips also took a hit. The power cables supply electricity to the trains, while the rail clips hold the railway tracks in place. Now, damaged rail clips may cause trains to derail. There was also damage on the third rail, which supplies power to trains moving between stations. A faulty third rail may cause power loss to the train. Now, in total, 34 rail breaks were found across 1.6 kilometers of tracks between Clementi and Dover stations. These rail breaks pose safety risks if left unrepaired. But what are some of the complexities involved when it comes to repairing the damage and restoring full service? Associate Professor Raymond Ong joins us live now. He is Deputy Head of Research and Enterprise at NUS Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Prof Ong, welcome to the program. Uh, tell us, Prof Ong, how bad is the damage exactly? How much of a safety issue is it to commuters? We are talking about the damage to at least three of the core systems of the railway systems, uh, including uh, the third rail, which supply power. Uh, we are talking about the rail brake, which can affect the structural integrity of the rail uh, track itself. And also, we are also talking about uh, the cable, which is actually providing power to the ancillary systems of the railway uh, uh, railway. Uh, systems including like signals and all this. So these have to be repaired uh, and tested in all core systems. And it's not just one system, but all possible core systems. And to make sure that it's ready without uh, failure uh, before we can actually open it for operations. But how complex is such recovery or repair work, Prof Ong? Give us a sense of the work being done here. Uh, I have to share that uh, in repairing the track, we would have to actually uh, have the physical track be brought onto the elevated bar duct and transported to the uh, affected segment through vehicles uh, because they are simply too heavy uh, for uh, our engineers to just carry it over there. We are talking about in the, the order of weight equipment tons. And, and this means that there is challenges to even install it with that limited space that we have on the elevated viaduct. And, and, and moreover, uh, from today, we have seen that there's heavy rain in the morning and we are expecting bad weather tomorrow. And these are actually factors where we cannot have our workers actually work on the track where there's still electricity and there's a, a likelihood of light, uh, lightning risk. And, and these, we have to make sure that there's a safe environment for our railway workers and engineers to work in, while at the same time fighting to actually restore the infrastructure to make the system work. So the rainy weather, that's a huge factor. Uh, how would the complexities faced by rail repair workers affect the time needed to fix the damage? Do we have uh, similar case studies in the past to look at? Unfortunately, this is the first time where we have seen uh, a sequence of unfortunate events where we actually see that uh, the, the boogie actually caused the, 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 the damage to the track and the third rail. And it's a sequence, sequence of events that's very unfortunate. And indeed, this is the first time this has happened in our uh, railway history in Singapore. And we have a lot to learn from it. And mm. judging from what we can see from the news that we have uh, on the uh, severity and the extent in terms of the, the length of the segments affected, we, we really have to wait till more information from our railway engineers, from SMRT and LTA to actually uh, provide a detailed update on the progress of the repair, because that is the key. After the progress of the repair, then we will have additional checks to ensure that the system is working before we can open it for traffic. 
Is there a rough timeline that we can look at, even if engineers work around the clock? I mean, authorities have said that full service will not be restored tomorrow and may take till Monday. Yes, and, and that is highly possible because we are talking about a distance of 1.6 kilometers with 34 rail bricks that has to be repaired. And that itself uh, could take days to actually repair. Uh, even and, and that alone, uh, if that is bad weather. So, so we have to be a bit more conservative on the expect. What kind of testing would usually need to be done before the tracks are safe for trains to run on again, Prof Ong? And if we look at the particular train that started it all, can it actually come back into service? Okay, I will have to answer this in two parts. First part for the testing and repair, or for the repairs. First, when the track go in, we have to test for track alignment. And after that, to ensure that the cable uh, the power systems, the third rail is working and ensuring that they pass all the safety checks. And thereafter, we will actually have uh, uh, train runs without passenger load to actually try to see whether uh, the operations can be moved smoothly without further damage to the repair parts. And then there will be actually uh, open to traffic in a face-by-face -face operation to ensure that uh, we are not overloading the repairs, uh, the, the uh, overloading the system. At the same time, we can actually uh, observe whether the repairs are working well or not. And then after that, we can open it for full operations. So this would be a careful calibrated repair regime that we need to take a, take a look into it. Now, in terms of the uh, other aspects on, on, on the uh, operations, uh, on the duration, it's precisely of this, then it will take uh, uh, some time to actually wait for the repairs to be done. All right, Prof Ong, thank you very much for speaking with us again tonight. That was Associate Professor Raymond Ong from NUS. Now, separately, SMRT says there was a lapse in protocol when train services on the Circle Line were disrupted last week. On Tuesday, 17th of September, the disruption lasted nearly two hours. SMRT is also investigating the root cause of a fire that led to another disruption the next day, again on the Circle Line. Now, SMRT says the maintenance team on the 17th of September failed to follow standard protocols by carrying out repair works during service hours without proper clearance. The incident started when a circuit breaker tripped in one of the systems that monitors the safe operation of trains. In the cause of rectifying the problem, another circuit breaker also tripped. The 18th of September disruption lasted about 15 minutes. A fire broke out at one of the traction safety shutdown system cubicle at Kim Chuan Depot. SMRT says it is working closely with transport authorities to review the design of its systems.